Why don't you introduce us to your characters and your roles on the show? Mm. You first. All right. Uh, my name is Ksenia. I play Kenzie, uh, Bo's best friend and confidant, uh, a thief with a wicked sense of fashion. Um, <laughs> yeah. My name is Rachel Scarston. I play Tamsin. And Tamsin is introduced in season three as Dyson's partner and sort of Bo's foe. And we don't really know exactly what her motives are. They're sort of revealed at the end of season three. And that is all I can say. And she doesn't have as good a fashion sense. Um, <laughs> see? But... Well, actually, you should go next. I should go last. Okay. Um, my name is Emmanuel, and I play the Morrigan. I'm the leader of the Dark Fae, and uh, I think I have pretty good fashion sense. Just yeah. Like, yeah. Delicious. Yeah. 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 delicious fashion sense. And, I would hate to admit that, but okay. <laughs> okay. Like, we we can share that. <laughs> we have something in common. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, leader of the Dark Fae, and you'll get to find out a lot more about the Morrigan's past in the new season and interaction with other characters. It'll be fun. I'm, hmm? Uh, yeah, I think it's understood by now. Okay. <laughs> but I was gonna, I'm Jay Firestone, it's my show. I buy their fashion clothes. <laughs> and when the show is over, I own them all. So I'm going to have all these great shoes and dresses and outfits. I don't he's know what I'm going to do with them. I just went into his know. office the other day, and I walk in, and he's like, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying on, I can't see the person's <laughs> pants, but I'm trying on their pants. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, every time we, every day we have this rule, really stiletto. cool guest star. If we kill them, I get to take their clothes after. This, so. It's a fun show. eBay next stop. Hey, eBay. Yeah. <laughs> now, guys, so. um, Kenzia, for example, your character is very street smart, isn't she? How would you compare yourself? Do you think you're as street smart as she is in real life? Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be terrible. I always say what I admire about Kenzie is that she can stare evil right in the face and no matter how afraid she is she will stay there you know for her friends she'll fight to the end so i try to learn from her i i hope to be that brave and and courageous in my own life and um street smart i don't know i feel like if i was if i had to live on the streets i'd be like a total baby and um and definitely not as tough as she is and Rachel, your um, character Tamsin questions her loyalties, doesn't she, in the show? Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, uh, Tamsin, I think, struggles because she's a part of the Dark Fae, but in many ways has been displaced from her original purpose. And um, I think, you know, we all sometimes experience that in life, and, and it's hard then to fully identify with who we were before, especially since she's now met all of these lovely light fae people and um, and really, you know, I think falls in love with Bo in a lot of ways. Um, and so that sort of presents this, this huge problem for her. And it's been really interesting this season to sort of see how that changes and evolves and whatnot. Mm. And Emmanuel, your character's quite cunning, isn't she? How cunning are you in real life? And, and what do you think it's saying about talent agencies? <laughs> <laughs> what, the feeding off of their talent sort of thing? It's not, it, there's a lot of parallels, I think, in that world. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think uh, it's a lot of fun being able to say and do inappropriate things that normally <laughs> in real life you wouldn't be able to say or do, but you sometimes really want to. And... And I think that's one of the, the great things about the Morgan is she's unapologetic about who she is and how she handles people. And, and I think, uh, you know, but yet she still has to manage things and she doesn't show her cards all at once she, because she has to manage different, you know, the light fae and all the different characters that, that she comes into contact with and for her own purposes and make sure that things go her way. Thanks. Cool. Uh, can I ask you guys a question about the role of women in television, if that's yes. okay? Because uh, it's kind of a hot topic in Britain with all the Scandinavian TV. There's been a lot of strong women fronting a lot of the shows there. Yeah, Scandos. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Nordic noir, you know. Um, and I was at an event for that recently, and everybody was saying to all of these actresses, it's amazing what all these strong roles for women, and all the actresses were going, well, we kind of just thought they were strong roles. Full stop. 
And I was looking at the fact that you guys do a horror show, it's a fantasy show, it's got all kinds of layers to it, and there's a lot of horror coming out of America right now, a lot of horror TV, and yet you're the only one that seems to have such strong roles at the front for women. It's this guy. It's this we guy, We were just yeah. talking about yeah. this. We are very Jay. lucky, because yeah. it's his like specialty. Girl power <laughs> is this man's specialty, so we're all just lucky to, to be a part of it, and it's a challenge to find roles for women that are strong and exciting and, and challenging for us as actors so and also don't depend um like that the females in the show don't get their identity from males <laughs> their characters aren't um sort of dictated by what the male characters in the show are doing which is so rare it, it's really dictated by what the female character in the show is doing yeah um, I'm the voice good. of women on the show. <laughs> well, there was a big fight with the writers. Oh, and, the voice and, of and, women. And, 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 there was a big fight with the writers, and we had a couple guys on the set. And we have we have a mixed set of writers, women and men, that write this show. And we had a very conservative writer for a little while, and he started writing scenes that didn't make sense to me. And we had this big fight one day, and all of a sudden, my whole office hears me yelling and screaming in the office. I said, I am the voice of women on the show. <laughs> You know, I said, you write what I tell you to write. And then we had this big fight about it, and it was fun. But I've sort of developed this over the years. I did a show called The Original Nikita years yeah. ago. I did a show, show called Relic Hunter with Tia Carrero, yeah. which was fun. And I've done a couple of films with women, and just it's... Uh, I read Cosmo when I... On planes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I read yeah, Vice Column. No, in the early days... When they, I used to... Always, I scare. When I was on airplanes, and I traveled constantly, I'm on a plane every other week sort of thing, I used to read women's magazines because I would already I didn't read the guys' magazines. I read the girls' magazines. I learned uh, advice columns, stuff like that. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Like, dear Cosmo. <laughs> oh, unbelievable what women write. Cosmo, it cracked me up, the advice they have. Yeah. Did you ever write in yourself? Hmm? Did, Did I? you ever write in and ask for advice yourself? <laughs> write in Cosmo? No, no. She actually no, no, no. writes the answers, answers to Cosmo. <laughs> it's like a ghostwriter for <laughs> <laughs> no, But I've, I've actually written parts of the show on a regular basis. I wrote one script, but I've written like scenes. You know, whenever I'm frustrated with something, I'll take it over and I'll write it. So. Where did Where did Lost Girl come from? Uh, the origin. Silly idea I had. <laughs> I was sitting in Cannes and I had the idea, a friend of mine actually had pitched me a low budget movie sort of thing, and uh, I said, no, 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 I can make a series out of this sort of thing. So, and he had pitched me a very weak idea, oh, I shouldn't say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he pitched me something that didn't work, right? And it was a genetically engineered girl who, and I said, and I decided she should be bisexual because I wanted, I said at one point, if Buffy were made today, she'd be bisexual. And, uh, and I said, she's got to be strong. She's got to be conflicted between what's right and wrong. And there should be no rules to her life. She should determine her own rules. And I gave that general rule to a few people. A few people were challenged to write something. Michelle Lavretta came in. She found the character out, and she put it in the fairy world, which was great. And uh, it just started getting going from there. But the idea was a very strong, undefined character in that she was going to find her way. We adapted like mad to this cast. Okay, uh, Anna, who plays uh, Bo, originally was the original character was a strong woman who ripped doors off buses and was determined. And Anna had a certain naivety in her own performance, so we changed the role a bit. Mm -hmm. Ksenia, she knows this. Her role was originally fairly minor. We hadn't expected her to be what she turned out to be. So she was just a little bit of a kid in the scene, and then she turned out to be a hero in a big way. Because the way she did the performance, boom, boom. <laughs> you know? Emmanuel, Emmanuel, and I love, I love telling the story. Emmanuel was supposed to be this quirky character that came in once in a while and just did some mean, evil. We called her Cruella Deville, sort of things, you know. But she, she, but she really brought it all to life. So she's become a much bigger character in the show. And Rachel was my, what do we call you? I said the Angel Devil. I said I wanted, I said I wanted this. I had this little dream of this new character to introduce, and I said, I want the face of an angel. It's going to be our real shit. So, <laughs> Which is nothing oh, like yeah. that. Nothing. <laughs> and everybody said, oh, you'll never find her. You'll never find her. So it's been fun, because these characters have all been developed sort of uh, 
improv wise. I don't know if that's the word, but they evolved. Is, is that why Emmanuel's got some of the quirkiest dance things I think I've ever seen you do in your career? <laughs> that is like one of my favorite scenes ever. I actually, I texted you or emailed you or something right after I saw that scene and I was like, oh my God, you're a comedic genius. Oh, the Beck stance. It the was Bex so <laughs> phenomenal. I just remember thinking all the Smallville fans have been waiting for you to get your shirt off and then suddenly you just start falling about. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to like that. The unsexy dance. <laughs> yeah. But it was very funny. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. we were worried whether she'd do it or not because it was, uh, but you pull it off so beautifully. Well, John wow. Fawcett called me and he was like, okay, so there's this thing in the new script. I was like, yeah, about like, so am I supposed to be a good dancer or is this like a bad dancer? And either way, I'm going to need some help choreographing what we're going to do so I don't look, well, silly. I mean, the point was to look silly, yeah. but, <laughs> but choreographed silly yeah. <laughs> somewhat uh, so we talked about it on the phone before Christmas and we shot the episode at, just after Christmas and and I remember being up at like four in the morning because I had like a 6 a.m. makeup call or something I was like this is way too early to be doing this dance and I think we set call like was like 7 a.m. by the time I was dancing around I was like oh my god this is way too early <laughs> that probably <laughs> added to the crazy you were like well I don't know what's happening <laughs> yeah but it was a blast that was a lot of fun I mean, the other question I've got, uh, we talk gender, but the other thing that I was talking to some journalist friends of mine and we were struck by is it's one of the few shows I can think of where it feels like the casting is completely colorblind. I love the fact we have a fantasy show and the myths are from all over the world, but it can be any race who's playing. I, the, the Siren is originally mostly a Greek myth, and yet we have a black man playing him. I think that's just brilliant. Um, but I was wondering if that was ever conscious or if that was just a, 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 an open door policy. You just thought that the casting, you know. I just go for the best actors. Cool. <laughs> I mean, that's actually been, we've had this little battle about how there was a defined role in the script a couple times now, and I won't get specific, but it involves some of these characters even. And the character, the actors didn't fit. You know, we tried to get what was described in the script, and then one day I just said, oh, screw it, I'm just going to go for the best actors. It's brilliant. I mean, there's no show like it I can think of right now on air that has the sheer variety. That, and it's just, you know, it's one of those things. You, you, I, we've started, I'm working for a magazine called Cult TV Times. We've only been running six months. I'm watching a lot of telly lately across a lot of countries. <laughs> so it was really striking to sit down and watch Lost Girl and just see how different you are from everything that's out there. Um, but also to be aware, I, think I keep saying to people, have you watched Lost Girl? And they're like, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I didn't realize anyone else was into it. That's so great. Because all these people are just starting to find it bit by bit in the UK. Wow. I mean, yes, you've got the DVDs. You've got What's on Netflix now? Exactly. That's what I did. I watched it on Netflix. Yeah. I mean, High def. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Netflix is trying we, to pick it up. High <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about that because I, it's, it's very interesting with high definition. There was a time back in the 80s where you'd shoot things on, on video. A lot of British shows were shot on very unforgiving video with, with, with sort of blanket lighting. And I was watching some 80s stuff and looking at it and going, oh my God, it looks like high def because you can see every little feature. Every little, and all these actors were so brave to go in front of it. But you guys have amazing makeup departments, you've got great wardrobe, oh, texture, and lighting. Up, right? it's, it's not and of course, cool. they naturally. <laughs> we're we're all that bad like this. <laughs> 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 no, we have uh, amazing departments all around. Everything from our set decoration to wardrobe to hair, makeup, lighting. David Green, who originated the lighting and the look of the show, mm -hmm. um, is phenomenal. And, and I like that we look different and we have a very dark, uh, kind of shaded, Orangey Tuscan, I don't know yeah. how would you describe it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that works. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> Great, I'm done. <laughs> we have moods all the time. There's Moody. always these little smoke yeah. machines. Or <laughs> not smoke, steam, whatever it is. <laughs> steam Fog smoke. up the recess. <laughs> so it's like, oh, too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, wait a second. Yeah. 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 And you have all the smoke, you can't even see the actors. It just looks like so the smoke. set's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. if, if you ever came to set, you'd see our lights aren't lights. They're these big, like, Fluffy, eight fluffy. feet tall things we, we call fluffy, call fluffy. And, <laughs> and they're big square panels that are like shaded light so it's